morning, George. Morning, George. So, we've got the run of the place and the kettle for the day as we tackle a variety of common computing tasks to discover which of our devices is best. I've got an entry-level 13-inch MacBook Air, which cost £1,000. And I've got an 11-inch iPad Pro, complete with a magic keyboard, coming in at £1,030. Released in 2020, my 13-inch MacBook Air comes with Apple's much-talked-about M1 processor, has a force-touch trackpad, backlit keyboard and can last up to 18 hours on a single charge. Well, my iPad Pro was released this year. It may only have a single USB-C port and 11-inch touchscreen, but when paired with the backlit Magic Keyboard accessory, it gets upgraded with a similar multi-touch trackpad to John's MacBook and a cantilever stand for easy screen adjustment. So, all in all, John, I think my iPad Pro is quite happy to go head-to-head -head with your MacBook. It even has a LiDAR scanner and Face ID. Well, I can't match your Face ID, but I do have Touch ID to unlock my MacBook, and I've got two USB-C ports opposed to your one. Mm. And, actually, they're really quite similar, aren't they? Yeah, they even look quite similar. Mm. Oh! Email! Hi, I need two identical sets of meeting notes typed up in 15 minutes. Please! Well, at least he said please. Yes, in capitals. Oh, yes. Typing is one of the most important features when it comes to computing, so challenge number one is all about the tippy-tappy experience. So, to find the best keyboard, we're heading to the meeting room, where we've been tasked with transcribing these minutes from the CEO's recent growth plan. Let's start. When it comes to word processing, both devices have the same Pages app installed, which comes free of charge from the App Store. We won't be buying any shares. No. Limit yourself. We're just the humble secretaries, though. Yes. My MacBook comes with Apple's latest keyboard, which features 12 function keys and uses scissor-type mechanisms that should help reduce sticky keys and make for speedier typing. Well, it's much better than their old butterfly keyboard, which was a bit of a nightmare. While my iPad Pro has an on-screen keyboard, the Magic Keyboard add-on is better suited for longer typing sessions, thanks to the same key design as John's MacBook, making my typing experience quick and error-free, even though the keys are closer together. I have to say, this keyboard is a dream to type on. I actually sometimes like a slightly smaller keyboard. I find my, my fingers can touch all the keys very Ooh. quickly. While George has got the nimbler fingers, my bigger keyboard is still proving a pleasant experience. Well, I mean, this is just a good conventional keyboard. It seems rather similar to the one on my existing laptop. But with a massive nine minutes on the clock, I've managed to finish first. Well, John, that is me done. So, on the basis of that Big Boss challenge, my iPad absolutely walked it. But I couldn't shift the niggling doubt that for the day-in, day-out office grind, it might be a different story. For me, I really enjoy that you've got the option of using both the touch screen and the keyboard. Mm. But if I was going to be honest, if I had to do a really long document, if we were here all day, I sort of like just having it on a slightly bigger mm. format. If you're doing a little bit of typing, it's good to use the iPad. If you're doing a lot, you probably want the laptop. I agree. I think if we were here slogging it out all day, I think I'd rather be on the mm. MacBook Air. Yes. You can take the win. So, John's full-size MacBook keyboard wins this challenge. Time for a spot of lunch back in the office kitchen, methinks. Tell you what, I've got my lunchbox. A challenge. Challenge number two. Compare screen and audio quality over lunch. Yes, it's challenge two. Screen and audio quality. While both our machines can happily tackle work tasks, they're also entertainment devices. So next, we're going to stream some 4K content, and first up, we're going to compare screens. So my iPad has an 11-inch liquid retina screen. Um, it's a little bit better than HD, it actually has 264 pixels per inch. How about yours? Oh, well, mine isn't a touch screen, it's just a retina display, and it's got 37 fewer pixels per inch than Ooh, yours. Ooh, 37 fewer pixels! But how do they look side by side? OK, let's press play at the same time. Gosh, they both look very similar. They actually. do look very similar. I mean, almost <laughs> too hard to call between them. Very similar. Sharpness, very, very similar. similar. I think yours may look a little more detailed, but it's smaller. You want that, that pixel density. And both also offer the latest P3 colour gamut, which claims to create a more vivid picture than previous generation displays. 
mean, it's almost like they're made by the same manufacturer. Would have thought, <laughs> yes. So, when it comes to visuals, there's little to choose between both devices. Will audio quality be a similar story? I've got stereo speakers, one either side of the keyboard, and uh, they've got Dolby Atmos support. So, to your two speakers, John, I can raise you. I actually have four speakers dotted on either side. They also produce stereo sound, and very cleverly, if you switch it over like that, you then switch it over so you still get the same left mm. and right breakdown of the I like sound. That. Yes. Yep. As well as having built in speakers, the MacBook Air has the option of plugging headphones into the 3.5mm audio jack on the side. Whereas for the iPad, you'll need Bluetooth headphones or a Thunderbolt adapter if I want wired audio. But we want to hear which of our built-in speakers sound the best. First, I'll be cranking up the volume on my MacBook. I know Emily's with you. Where are you going? I mean, it, it, it makes a loud noise. Uh, yes, it is a very precise sound. Um, it's not got a huge amount of body to it. It's got a good stereo effect. So, John's MacBook produces a loud and sharp sound. Now to turn my iPad up to the max. 911, this is emergency operator 625. I've just been robbed. Okay, sir, I don't even know where you are. Last name? There's not a lot in it. I'd say that maybe it's a slightly richer sound the iPad mm. makes. I find it less tinny. You know, I sort right. of find it a little bit more, a bit more body, body in the it. middle. Yeah. Yes. With slightly better audio and like-for-like -like visuals, it's my iPad Pro which shades this round, making it one each with one test to go. So at one point apiece, it's all to play for in our last challenge of the day. And because everyone was skiving at home, we actually got to use the photocopier for once. Aha! Challenge number three. And it's this. It says, put your devices to use in a usability challenge. That's right. It's time for our devices to really slug it out and see which is the most versatile machine. While both products are evenly matched so far, they use very different software, with my MacBook running Mac OS, designed to be controlled by a mouse. And my iPad OS designed around touch input with an icon-based layout. To find the victor, we're tackling a variety of common computing tasks, and the fastest time to complete them wins. Three, two, <laughs> one. Go. How exciting. Take a photo of the receptionist and import it to your device. Given my MacBook has a traditional laptop design, there's no rear-facing cameras. So, to take a snap... A smile away! Thank you! I need to use my phone and send the picture wirelessly. Airdrop picture to MacBook. Though the process was rather simple. A strong start from John and his MacBook then, but with a pair of rear-facing cameras. Snapping the receptionist is much simpler on my iPad. Gorgeous. Right, thank you. Moving me quickly on to task two, drawing a sketch. Get a lovely little split screen going on. Oh, I see. And once again, my iPad's versatility made this task a breeze, this time thanks to its touch input. Yes. I'd say that's complete. Whereas I'm forced to use the trackpad on my MacBook Air, making drawing rather difficult. <laughs> this is not a portrait. It's not going to be hanging in the Tate. Portraits complete and task number three awaits. Back them up to an external hard drive. Well, here's the hard drive. Let's... Uh... Plug the USB-C in there. And thanks to two USB-C ports working at up to 40 gigabits per second, I can make up some much-needed time, with my masterpiece flying onto the drive in seconds. So, I've exported. Not for long, JB. I've got USB-C as well, although just the single port. This, very conveniently, slots into, into there. That. Move to TGS Backup. There it is. On to task four. Download Dropbox and upload the drawings so you can share with the office. But despite macOS having a built-in app store, Dropbox oh, isn't God. available, so I've got to download it from their website. Download the app. Whereas Dropbox is available on the iPad OS app store. OK, that's Dropbox. So I'm able to upload my files using the iPad's Wi-Fi 6 connectivity without issue. And then Georgie iPad Pro choose. Thankfully, my MacBook also has Wi-Fi 6, so once Dropbox was downloaded... And now I need to upload the drawing. Sharing the sketch with the office was a quick and easy process, putting my MacBook hot on the iPad's heels, going into the final task. 
Task 5, make a video call to your opponent to say you've completed the task. And with FaceTime pre-installed on my iPad, that's as simple as a couple of screen taps and beaming my face across the internet using the 1080p wide-angle front-facing camera. I'm right behind you, though, Georgie. My MacBook 720p camera may have a lower resolution, but FaceTime is also pre-installed. This one's going down to the wire. But who came out on top? You stop the clocks. Incredibly, there was just one second in it. I took 9 minutes 15. And I took 9 minutes 14. So it's one of those things that I always feel like we knew the laptop would be able to do most of these tasks, but it was a question of could the iPad keep up? And I would say that the iPad really has kept up. So I think for this round, I think we should call it a draw. A draw, agreed. Which means, after a day in the office, our two devices are tied in a score draw. And it seems that your next laptop doesn't necessarily need to be an actual laptop.